Okay. Yeah, so your, uh, your bagger's here, man. You can come pick it up whenever. It's no big deal. We'll have it up here for you. Okay. Yeah, you too, man. Simple enough. Mocan power equipment. This is Andy. How may I help you? Yeah. Yeah, we got all kinds of mowers. We got red. We got orange. We got, you know, like a darker shade of red. Yeah. Residential. Rob, what's a residential mower? Dude, I can tell you all about it. Well, I'm here with Rob at Mocan Power Equipment in Spring Hill, Kansas. He's my dealer, and today we're gonna break down residential and commercial mowers and give you guys a little more insight in your buying process. So if you're watching this video, Maybe you're just a subscriber, or maybe you're someone that's actually interested in buying a new mower. And as you can already tell from your research, is there's a million brands, there's a million types, there's a million different deck sizes. So uh, we're just gonna go through the gambit right here on Gravely stuff that we have out here. Like I said, this is Rob, he's my dealer. He does Gravely, he does Toro. When you're going to purchase one of these mowers, whether you're a full-blown commercial guy, weekend warrior doing 20-something lawns, or a homeowner, What's the first thing you want to be greeted with when you're going to a dealership to buy a new mower? Well, the first thing you want to be greeted with is when you come in and say, I'm interested in buying a mower, the first question out of any dealer's mouth should be, what are you using the equipment for? Exactly. How many acres? How much? How, how big is your yard? Um, are you mowing uh, a lot of hills? Are you? Is it rocky soil, sandy soil? What kind of material you're actually going to be cutting and where you're going to be cutting at? So that's, that's the number one question. Yeah, because if you're wanting to get something that's working best for you, if you walk into a dealership and they're just like, this is the one you want, you haven't talked about anything, he's just trying to get you into something or unload some of his inventory that they don't want here anymore. Make sure you're getting the message across on what you need this machine for, because you could buy something that's way overpowered or you can buy something that's not quite cut out for what you're getting ready to get into. Correct. So the next thing you really want to know, as a dealer, we want to know what your budget is. We're not going to try to, if you give us, a, say, a $10,000 budget, and, and you tell us that you're mowing with a five-acre track, a good dealer is not going to try to shoot for the moon. We're going to try to put you into the exact piece of equipment that you need to do the job and do it a job efficiently. The budget would be the next biggest thing that you really need to discuss with your dealer um, on, on how much you're willing to spend. Because like Rob was saying, a good dealership, their goal isn't to take all the money out of your wallet, it's to get you in the right piece of equipment so you're not going to be having to come back all the time. Correct. They don't want to put you in something that's not made for what you're wanting, and at most times they wouldn't want to put you in something that's more than what you need, but me, as the kind of person I am, I always want something that's more than what I need. It's just, it's just my personality. That's how it rolls. We've never had a customer come back and say, I wish I would've got a smaller I mower. I wish I would've got a smaller mower, man. <laughs> this thing's horrible. But as far as your budget goes, there's also other options such as financing. There's always different sales going on. Fleet pricing happens. Yep. Kind of know when you're wanting to purchase this mower, call your dealership, see if they have any plans coming out or financing options available. You know? That's right. Don't yeah. don't be afraid to call and ask and say, hey, do you guys have any upcoming sales? You know, especially at the fall time, at dealers, we don't like to have this equipment sitting on our lot over the fall. Yeah. We want to sell it. We want to move it. Um, so that way we get fresh inventory in coming in and, and, and you know, brand new equipment ready to go for 2018. Yeah. So there's just a couple little small details to think about when your guys are going out to purchase a new mower. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Rob, man. We're gonna break down some of these machines and help you understand a little better the differences between the, I wouldn't really call them cheaper, but they're cheaper for a reason because they're not made to do the workload that some of these other machines are. Less expensive. Less expensive. Yeah. So we're gonna go through residential mowers all the way up to big commercial mowers and kind of tell you guys the ins and outs and why it is rated as a commercial mower or why it is rated as a re residential mower. So let's get to it. So this model here is basically for that homeowner that lives in town, that has less than a quarter acre, um, has gates, a lot of landscape, 
Um, and, and so that will get you in to a basic setup machine. The next model that we should go to thinking about in the homeowner line or the consumer would be our ZTX series. Um, what that gets you. So this model here is basically for that homeowner that lives in town, that has less than a quarter acre, um, has gates, a lot of landscape, um, and, and so that will get you in to a basic setup machine. The next model that we should go to thinking about in the homeowner line or the consumer would be our ZTX series. So this is our ZTX model and the ZTX model is meant to mow up to a half acre to two acres per week. Um, it gets you the next step up from the ZT. It gets you a heavier deck. It's a fabricated deck. It gets you heavier due to your transmissions built to mow more acreage. Um, and, and so you, you just keep stepping up. We actually have another model in this lineup. It's called our ZTXL. The XL is built to mow anywhere from that half acre clear up to three acres. But what you're getting with the XL series is heavy duty or transmissions that are serviceable, unlike the X, which are non-serviceable. And then from our ZTX model, we bump up to our HD line. This is our bread and butter. This is probably the sweetest mower we have in our lineup for the money. Um, this mower is what we like to call an estate mower. Built to mow anywhere from that half acre all the way up to five acres per week. Um, this machine here, the reason it's such a sweet mower is you're getting a fully fabricated welded commercial deck. It's a 10 gauge deck. Um, you're also getting fully serviceable heavy duty ZT hydro gear transmissions. Um, this machine is built for the, the heaviest mowing that you could put on it as a consumer. Um, not to say that we don't have uh, some commercial people running this machine as like a backup or a small mower. Um, it is built for the heaviest mowing that you could put on it as a consumer. And then we go up to our full commercial line. <laughs> Starting with our Pro Stance line, um, this machine is built for, like you know, the commercial product, um, the commercial lawn and landscaping. Uh, this machine, we do have residents using it on that five to 10 acres if you're going clear up to 61 inch deck. The nice thing about the, the stand-on units is that on the commercial aspect, you can fit more on a trailer. They're heavy enough to do whatever job you're mowing. You know, if you're mowing eight hours a day, six days a week, these are the mowers that, that that's what they're set up to do. Um, the other nice thing about a stand-on is that you're not constantly getting up and down, up and down out of the seat if you're moving dog bones or, or kids toys, things like that. That's where this machine shines. And from our stand, commercial stand-on mowers, we go to our commercial set-down mowers. Um, there are a couple models in between these two that we could start you out in a, in a ProTurn 200, ProTurn uh, H, or a ProTurn series, ProTurn 100, ProTurn 200, ProTurn 400, which is our, our baddest to the bone uh, commercial machine that you could buy. Air ride seat, fabricated deck, um, heavy duty or engine. Uh, the frame itself is a heavier heavier frame. You get into the roll bars, um, but that's what you're getting when you when you jump from the the lowest end ZT, which is our consumer, all the way up to our our heavy dutyest uh, right on set down commercial. Now, after we just went through the whole lineup from the residential all the way up to the big commercial, I have questions. As a consumer, I own a business, but you always want to know the ins and outs. What or why makes these commercial mowers? be capable to mow that much more or last longer or any of those things. What's the differences between say your uh, 34 down there and the big commercial one? Uh, other than looks, <laughs> you're getting you're getting heavy duty or engines. Um, they're built for commercial. They have heavy duty or parts. Um, the frames, the frames are a solid welded frame. Um, most of our frames are a, a two and a half inch square tube. Um, the, the next thing you're getting is a heavy duty or PTO clutch, um, heavy duty or spindles. That would probably be rated one of the heavy, the, the more important things. Yeah. Um, there are plenty of machines out on the on the market that consider themselves heavy duty, right? But and commercial, but they may have a residential spindle in them, right? Um, so you hit something, it destroys it. Um, so again, the 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 one thing you want to look at when purchasing a commercial mower or a residential is deciding on if I'm going commercial I want a heavy duty engine I want it I want that engine to have the most strongest parts that Kawasaki Kohler could put in that or Yamaha whatever brand oh, yeah. we want the best parts they could put in that we don't want just one off the line we want all the good parts the next thing spindles frame PTO clutches 
Um, tires, that's that's another big thing. Yeah. Um, you know, you get a lot of residentials with the small tires, they ride really bad. They're not yeah. a great ride. So that that's the main things to look at. That's one of the main things I noticed from the commercial <laughs> equipment I purchased. They're made to take on the situations, I guess right. you would say. So if you have hills, you have different objects you gotta maneuver and take on, these are constructed to handle those. The uh, homeowner edition, I'm not looking to take on gnarly hills for prolonged times. It's just, yeah. it's not made like these are. They don't have the weight, they don't have the big tire, the big stance, the weight distribution correctly. So as long as you're paying attention to what you're using these mowers for, make sure you get the knowledge back from your dealer to help you make the right decision for what you need. That's right. So now that we've kind of talked about the what and why and differences between the residential and commercial, I'm gonna give it back to Rob and he's gonna give you a price idea on these mowers so you can see what kind of bang you're getting for your buck. So starting with our ZT lineup, you could start in at introductory prices of $24.99 and they go up from there according to the deck sizes that you need. The next one would be our ZTX series and XLs. The X series pretty much starts in at about $2,800 and goes on up from there. About $3,300 be your more expensive one in a 64 inch or a 60 inch cut. And then you go to our HD lineup, which starts you out at about $49.99, and they go on up to $5,600 according to however much deck width you need. And then on the Pro Stance series, they'll start out 36 inch cut. Um, they start out about 6,800 and go on up from there depending on what size cut you need on these also. And then on our, our Pro Turn 400 series, uh, they start out at about 9,800 and go on up from there depending on motors and deck sizes. So that's our lineup. So guys, if you're just checking out this video because you're a subscriber, like always, man, I appreciate the support. You guys keep me doing what I'm doing. I like to drop the knowledge when I can. I don't know why I'm holding this pole like this, but I am, so you guys <laughs> gotta deal with it. Uh, this is Rob again. Rob, where can they find you at? You can find us at mocanoutdoorpower.com or on Facebook. Yeah, two easy ways to get a hold of them, and they do answer. You can feel free to message them on Facebook. They will get back with you. Like always, guys, if you found the video helpful in some sort of way, make sure you smash that like button. Leave a comment down below. If you got some, uh, if you got some good comments, man, I'm going to redirect them Rob's way. You can help answer them for sure. So like always, like, comment, subscribe, guys, and we will see you in the next one.